Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O's on the original sports podcast. Fellas, before we get into this discussion that we're about to have here, our mailbag, <clears throat> I got to tell you something. Ooh, mailbag. If you're not a Pittsburgh Pirate fan right now, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Oh, my God. This team is playing ball. It's unbelievable. I I was listening to, I was listening to Sports Talk Radio today, and they said this is the first time since, like, 2013 or 14 that – People are actually more excited for pirate baseball than Steeler camp to open. No. And we all we all think, you know, the Steelers are going to be legit. A lot of us think that. <clears throat> but pirate baseball yes, right now is over have... 500. Don't, cream, don't get so too excited. Yeah, but you know what? They're a half game out of a wild card spot. They're six games out of first place. Milwaukee has not hit a skid yet. Yeah, they're currently playing the Cardinals, who are just in front of them. You know, I, I mean, the second half just started. I'm a little excited. I'm a little excited. Chops, you a little I excited? Got, I, got, I got a little excited until Chops threw, gave us a throwback to Sid Bream. Thanks a lot for Bruce. Dude, Robert. I'm telling you. Morning. I've watched it over and over, and I'm telling you now, I, do, I think the man was out. I think his leg was lifted. I'd go to war on that one. I'll, I'm telling you. I even sent y'all to – I think he was out. Again, I've watched it three times. I've watched it over and over. Here's my thing, yeah, Mark. <laughs> I'm we listening. Believe, we believe the sun is going to rise tomorrow because it has so many times in the past. Yeah. This, the, the buckos have let me down so many times in the last seven, eight years. They might get hot. They don't want to – and they come time. They sizzle out. They get in the playoffs. They lose first. It's it, – it, it, I – I did say I wanted to see where they were after the All Star break. They're still doing well, so that that to me is promising. But fellas, I I need to see where they are and how they do in September. That's where they let me. I get hype on them. I start talking mad noise to people down here, and the next thing you know, we get kicked in the face. So that I'm just holding off. I want to be a homer. I do. I do. They gotta I get someone. Up, they have to get someone in the, before the trade deadline. They, they definitely have to. It's no question. That's something that must happen. But the I think I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't help myself. I'm excited. You're a baseball guy at heart, though. I remember the, you baseball and hockey. You you've always been down. You here, okay? Let me ask you this. I was shocked, and I admit that I was saying they weren't going to pull the trigger on Russ. And they weren't going to do anything in free agency. The Steelers proved me wrong. Do you think? The Pirates are going to do a flip and get somebody by trade deadline that makes a big splash, that makes an impression. Okay, here's what I want to see them do. There's a kid playing out in California uh, for the A's. Uh, I, I, his name's just draw, I'm drawing a blank right now with his name, but this kid's got three. Rooker is his last name. I think it's Brett Rooker. Okay, he's got three and a half more years of control. This son of a bitch hits the ball a country mile. He's legit, and he's playing in Oakland. I'd like to see them bring him in. Then you could DFA uh, Michael A. Taylor. You could DFA Sawinski. I don't care what you do after that. They need a first baseman. Well, I'll tell you, Talese has been playing decent first base. You know who's not, though? Um, Connor Joe really fell apart. Okay. He's hitting like a buck fifty the last two months. They got, oh. it out. They got a pretty decent solid Okay. Out. We're not going to get political on this show, but Mark, the barber just gave a politician type answer because I said, what do you think they'll do? He replied with, here's what I'd like to see him do. He, he, he gave the Heisman to that question. He gave the Heisman, what do you think they'll do? Here's what I think they'll do. I think they will go out and get an outfielder. I don't think they'll be willing to give up a top prospect to get a guy who has enough stability he's going to come in and make that big of a difference. They've been talking to the California Angels about this dude, Taylor Ward. He's trash. He's trash. He's hitting like he's hitting like a buck eighty the last two and a half months. He's had like why two would they, why, why would they consider that then? Because that's the Pittsburgh way. They'd have yeah. him under control. That's what I'm saying. That's why it's hard for me to, yeah. to, to get hype. You know what I mean? Believe you me, I want to dance in the streets. I want to dance in the streets. 
but I, but I, but I, look, man, ugh, I need to see him do it, man. I, I, they they let me down every year. They just don't. They trade away talent. They're not competitive. They're competitive now a lot further past the All Star break than I thought they would. And I know we're not far past the All Star break, but they're doing a lot better after the All Star break than I thought they would. Let's just see how long they can keep it rolling. Who'd our guy, who'd our guy from the Indianapolis Pirates say they should bring up? Oh, that first baseman. Uh, oh. hmm. Bring him up. That they're, Warinsky, I, no, not Warinsky. I, I forget what his name is, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Eh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. It's the power base, but this isn't about power baseball, fellas. There's hey. so much going on in our heads. They're spinning. There's so much sports. We're on sports overload this joint. So we decided to give those viewers, most of us pushed it out there, uh, an opportunity to get their questions answered on the show today. Uh, this is no holes barred summer mail bag edition. That's what this joint is called. Okay, so that's where we're heading. Here, here, let me give you question number one. Let's see what you think and know right off the bat, because this is a good one. You ready? Aaron Rodgers will be starting QB for the New York Jets this season. What are his chances he will help the Jets get to the playoffs? That's from Kevin F. in Toronto, PA, lifelong Jets guy. That That's my boy. We went to high school together. We went second grade. Listen, that's Kevin Fairman. I know that, Kevin. Oh, hell I yeah. know it. I know it. Good. You guys go first because I don't – you guys go first. I don't think Rodgers is the, the answer. He's 40 years old. He's coming off a significant injury. He's a head case. You know, if the Jets win, it's going to be because of that defense or Brees Hall. You know, I, I just – I, I don't buy into it. I don't. I don't buy into Aaron Rodgers anymore. He is not – which I didn't buy into Tom Brady, but Tom Brady was a winner. He knew how to use the guys around him. But I don't buy into Aaron Aaron Rodgers, and I don't think that they'll win because of him if they win. So basically you're saying he doesn't have to win. He just has to manage the game? Pretty much. And the other thing is, if he's out, the Jets are out. Tyrod Taylor is not going to, I don't think, carry that load. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know how, how his ACL is doing. Or Achilles. 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 His Achilles. Um, I don't know how it's doing. Same thing with Burroughs. I don't know how his he's doing. These guys going to be able to come back solid. I think Burroughs has a better chance because he's younger, but I don't know about Rodgers. He's 40, and I'm sure he'll be able to get in there and wreak some havoc for some of the games. I don't see them uh, – I, I see them 10, 10 and 7 best, but probably like 8 and 9. Okay. Here's the thing. Well, first off – is Barbara, you comparing like you're talking about Brady and regardless of what you want to say, don't forget when Brady went to Tampa Bay and he still won another ring, they had to change the playbook for him because to something he knew to me, which goes to coaching. Right. Brooke or Purdy, Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy is not a great quarterback, but his coaching gave him a playbook that he could use all the tools around him. And they rode that defense and he had a great supporting cast. He had a great supporting cast. 100%. 100%. Rodgers is loaded on offense. His defense is stout. Will the coaches put in a playbook that helps him? Will Rodgers get out of his own way? Because let's not forget, did you see, I don't even know if you guys saw his last uh, comments when they were talking, he was just on a podcast, you know, he does old boys podcast. And he said, words are tricky because they can determine any time when they want it to be mini camp when really those were OTAs, but they just changed the week and made it minicamp. Yeah. Well, he said, so the wording is tricky. However, Bri- or uh, my boy Rogers, the word mandatory was in there. That's not tricky. Everybody for that organization, every player knew to be there except you. So my thing is, does Rogers think he's bigger than he is? That's going to be the issue because, fellas, if you think about it, Rodgers has the same amount of rings as Russell Westbrook. He's older – or excuse me, Russell Wilson. He has the same amount of rings as Wilson, Russ. He's older than Russ, 
yet for some reason he gets so much love like he's going to change a team. I think he I think he may be more of a diva than people know. And if it's on his shoulders, I don't see it getting done. I think he gets a lot of accolades without a whole lot of stuff proven, in my opinion, in my opinion. Okay. So I probably said this before. I, I Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. But I was on a trip with a bunch of people a few years ago to uh, Paris and Bordeaux. And I met this guy from California, really nice guy, super nice guy, uh, him and his girl. And we got chit-chatting, and he was from the same area that Aaron Rodgers had originally grown up. And Aaron Rodgers' dad owned a hardware store, the whole nine yards. You know, he knew he knew the family. And he said that Aaron Rodgers was just basically rotten to his family. Didn't have a relationship with them. You know, yeah, uh, just that's you probably know, much that he's he just he's just jerk. He's a jerk. This is what this is yeah. what he told me. Jesus you know, he's coming yeah. from somebody who knew the family, which I was kind of I, I the look you had, Chops, right there. That's the look I had. I was like, Well, here's what I'm thinking about. If you think about it, go back over some of the, the prominent quarterbacks, right? You've seen Brady's family, you've seen Love's family from the Packers in the stands. You knew Brett Favre's family, and when his father died, yeah. you knew you. You know what I mean. You've seen Patrick Mahomes' family. You've seen uh, what's his name, Lamar Jackson's mother. Yep. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen Rogers' family. No. Like you know, how they show him in a press box or in the stands. His family. Hmm. That's what I was looking for. Hell, now that I think about it, he's, nope. he's been, he said he's estranged from. He hasn't talked to him in years. Yeah, it's, it's his own choice. It's his own choice, though. He's an ass. He carries himself with a chip on his shoulder. I don't even like to listen to him talk. I, yeah. I, even if he I thinks he knows him, everything. Well, that's just it. Even if I would align with him with anything, I still wouldn't want to hear what the hell he has to yeah. say. I don't. I just, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I, I don't even draft him. <laughs> that's wow, that's two. hatred. That's hatred. You know, well, it's, I don't hate the guy. I just don't have any admiration for him as an athlete. Okay, but here's but but here's the thing, which real quick, and I know we got to get on, but he to me has become what sports has allowed him to be, and I say that because being a quarterback, you get ah he's a quarterback and he gets special rules. Now he's been pretty good. He has been great, and he it's like he doesn't have to account for anything because he's never his feet are never held to the fire because. That some of the teams he's had, hell, think about when Brady won the Super Bowl. In that second half of that championship game, Brady threw for 70 yards and had multiple picks. And your boy Roger Steele couldn't get it done. And he doesn't, hell, he doesn't catch nearly the flack that Dak Prescott catches to me. And you're right. I think it's his attitude. I, I'm not really he's a fan a of his attitude. You know, yeah. he's a showboy. Yeah, that's all. And Dak catches all that shit because he plays for the Cowboys. Yeah, which yeah, that's but, the only reason he catches all that shit. Yeah, nobody wants to hear that Cowboys bullshit except for Cowboys fans. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I'm not a Cowboy hater. Trust me, I'm not. All right, and that's long ago. But he only catches that shit because the Cowboys can't get over the hump. It's not his fault. What about the rest of the team? You yeah. Know? Anyway, exactly. Mahomes, before we go on, I got to talk about this. I sent you guys a picture yesterday of Pat <laughs> going to camp. Pat's looking a little pudgy this year heading to camp. Fucking up, brother. He's looking, he's looking Chops, like I do. He's looking like me. <laughs> Chops hit it 100%. Come to first snap of the ball. Cool. He'll this sling that thing. Come to first snap of the ball. My man will go off. He will sling Rock and roll out the pocket, though. Did any one of you see his throw today in camp? No. Look at Freddie. Oh, he knows I hate the Cowboys. Freddie knows I hate the Cowboys. Freddie's just trying to stir shit up. Come on, Freddie. Did you – hold on. Did you guys see the play – the receiver, the the cat out of Texas that runs a 4-2? Yeah. Xavier Worthy. Mahomes takes a snap. Automatically rolls to his left. Throws it big. 70 yards in the air. You saw that. I did. Dude. I saw the clip. Yeah. Dude. I heard about it, so I had to go look at it. Fellas. I'm a Mahomes fan. On the money. 
on the money. He could have knocked the gnats off a frog's ass from that distance on the money. I don't seriously, seriously, dude, dude, he's ready. Are you call him? He was pop, but yeah, dude, love the kid. I, after you know what, I never disliked him at all, ever. But after I saw him do the uh, the quarterbacks thing last year on Netflix. I was like, oh man, what a great kid. I wish he was my son. He's just a good kid. Yeah, He's just man. a good kid. You know, I mean, I that's just, I don't know him personally, though. Who, who yeah, knows? I got you. You know, so, all right. Joe, my man Joe from Frederick says, what country will have the most Olympic medals this year? Most this Olympic? Year. Uh, <clears throat> It's going to be the United States. I think they said it's a close race between the United States and China. Uh, probably, Let me see what Germany do. But go ahead. Great Britain and then France. Probably like a close, or not even a close third and fourth. But China, United States, you'll be up there with over 100. Okay. I want to say the United States. But, fellas, I was watching a lot of these trials, and I understand they're nervous, but the stage on the Olympics is only going to be bigger. I'm not strong on our men's gymnastics team. I'm, 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 I know, fellas, I'm just – they're young. They're young, and I get that. But – and, again, maybe it was nervous for that day, but Paris is even – the Olympics is bigger. It's a bigger stage. I just, I'm going to, I'm going, I want to say, and I'm going to say the United States, I'm, I'm going to go with our home country. However, if we lose out three, four, five, you know, by that, by a few single, I'm going to say it, it, it would be the downfall of our men's gymnastics team. And I hate to hell, but I hate to hate to say that. Do you see our men's basketball team? Yeah, they well, just, what? listen, two pieces of uh, basketball news just broke. Spencer Dimwitty is going to re-sign with the Mavs. That's a good re-signing for them. Yeah. A year deal. And uh, LeBron had 11 points, scores the final 11 points uh, for oh. Team USA to rally, to rally. He only Germany. had 11? In the no, final, he scored the last 11, the, the last 11, 11 points. He's and he only won by team. one. And if you saw it, Sudan had a chance to win that. Yep. You can – I don't know if you guys saw the last this shot. This against Germany today. Oh, hey, today, oh today after, okay. He scored okay. the last 11. That's more than Brawny scored in the all summer league so far. Fellas, let me tell you what. If they had to rally today after their performance against Sudan, we got problems. We we got problems. Because after Sudan, I figured, okay, say you came in, say let's go extreme. Say they were drinking and partying the night before. I don't know. Then they realized, whoa, we're the US of A. We're the best of the best. But then you come out the next day against Germany. And still look flat, fellas. I'm worried about this. I'm, I'm I hate to say worried, but but if they don't win gold, I won't be surprised. This is I a wake up call for the NBA, Mikey. If they lose because they all play individually and not as a team like you need to in the Olympics, this is a wake up call for the NBA. This is why I struggle with the NBA. It's all about these dudes getting their money and playing their game because of them, not because of the team. Well, they won't. They, they won't care. I. I don't think they'll care. And I say that because of this. Think of their first dream team, right? Other than Leitner, you had superstars. Every guy on the team was already a Hall of Famer. They had already accomplished everything they needed to accomplish in their careers. Yet they still wanted to wear that flag and represent. Yeah. These guys, you got guys opting out of the Olympics. I don't think these guys care. I really it's don't. It's me, me, me. I don't think they care. Except and even if they don't talk. take gold, I don't see. I don't think we'll see much of a change. I really don't talk about it. I don't They'll think talk about it, but I don't think we'll see anything. Olympics are going to win gold. I don't think they're going to win gold. They'll be the first team to not win gold since two thousand four. That's ridiculous. I, I I don't care. I Who really cares? don't. I, I really I, I will not buy back into the NBA fully until we see team games. I'm sorry. I just I in this draft this year, this is this is a matter of guys who should be playing D League that are going to be playing in the NBA. The, the, exactly. the draft was horrendous, you know, and and that leads to what's this team going to look like in four years? How about eight years down the road? Yeah, and and you here's know? the thing, real quick, as we talk about this, we had talked about before. 
One of the things about European players and these players overseas that are getting drafted so high because they're fundamentally sound and they play defense. But do you realize their defense diminishes once they, a lot of them, once they come in. Now, Go Bears didn't, and the big guys don't. But Luca, Luca used to play defense. This this series and these in these playoffs and championship, he was taken out. He became a liability on defense. I think some of these guys who are European and strong their foundation in place, once they get over here and see how the NBA is, oh, if I can, if I can, if I can shortchange one of my games, my offense or my defense, I'll shortchange defense in a heartbeat. And I think we're seeing it. I don't think it's going to get better. You have to because it's going to save your legs in the long run to be able to to uh, defense. You're running around and stuff. Yeah, but again, nobody wants the wheel. <laughs> Dance in the streets. I figured we should move on. Let's hit it. What do we got? Who's who's next in the mailbag? All right. Next up, my man JB. He says, What will it mean if the men's basketball team doesn't win a gold? Oh, we nothing. You just said that. Nothing. Well, we didn't know, but nothing. nothing. (laughs) Does it matter? No. No. Do we go back to college players? I don't think that ever happened in nineteen in nineteen uh, times to the Olympics since I think nineteen thirty six or whatever you do the math. They've won gold sixteen times, silver twice, and bronze. No, silver once and bronze twice. But we see bronze. The last time they won Olympics. bronze was two thousand four. If they do not win gold, it you know, doesn't matter. Mark, here's the only reason why I don't think we'll see college players because they're leaving early now for the NBA. Don't forget, years ago, players, the top players wanted to be juniors and seniors. You know, they weren't leaving as early. Now you got the one and duns. I, I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. And I don't see the NBA going back to a team game. They love their one on one ISO ball. That's all they do. That's all. Man, I didn't see any today. I didn't see any against Germany, but against Sudan, did you see those cats? Throwing, I'm trying to assist. You're not there. I'm trying to assist that guys aren't there. Guys aren't used a lot to getting the nice assist. Remember when Magic played and certain guys played? You stocked and you had to keep your eyes open at all time. You never knew when it was coming. Yeah, like guys are guys are guys don't look for the no look anymore. Guys are expecting the guy to shoot. Let me look at the why they don't play shooting. defense either because they don't have to. No. They don't have to play defense. They know some somebody's going to just come up and throw a brick up. Chuck they don't it go up. Paint. They don't Chuck go it up. Paint. When was the yeah. last time you had a, a three-second call? What, 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 Chubbs, you much more NBA than me. When was the last time you saw the whistle? Three seconds. Man. I'll tell you what. When I played at St. Gertz, I was killed for that. I got three seconds every other time I went down the floor. He was camping yeah. out. Yeah, St. Gertz. Jeez. He was camping Back out. In the day, baby, St. Gertz, we rolled. But Bucky Trullo, man, he can run a crew. He can yeah. run a career. Yeah, oh man. Yeah. Hey, yeah. here we go. We'll what will this from Brian in Maryland? Will uh Russell Wilson? I couldn't get that out. I couldn't get that out going. Uh will Russell Wilson help the Steelers get past the first round of the playoffs? Yes, but here's the thing. You know, fellas, you've known me since that I always say football is the ultimate team sport. He's not going to carry that team, nor does he need to, like Mahomes does. But Russ can sit back, and he doesn't have to be much more than Brock Purdy was, and they can do their thing. Think about it, fellas. It was – hell, even some of the last few games, what was it, against Jacksonville, when uh, your boy Ben threw five picks in a playoff game. You're not going to have that. You know what I mean? You, you, you're not going to have that. So Russ – Play within your confines, which he's been before. You don't. He doesn't have to be the, the MVP. I think Russ is going to take them past the first round, but it's going to be truly a team effort. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, no, I agree. I agree with you, Chops. And here's the thing, everybody that I run into, because I, like I said, I'm always sporting the Pittsburgh gear just to piss people off, because, and that's all I have. But uh, what's Russell Wilson going to do this year? He's old. He's washed up. He didn't do anything in Denver. 
Did you check his stats last year? I would have loved to have him on the squad. 26 over 3,000 oh, yeah. yards, 26 touchdowns, and eight interceptions. For a, like for, said, in a team that, for a team that didn't want him and didn't play the last two games. Exactly. Ben, threw, like you said, threw five in a game, three in a game. Yeah. He was a gunslinger. But this guy is – I think he's going to do great. Um, yeah. He's going to take us not just to the first round. I think the second they could put – they can make a push for that AFC champion. Yes. It all comes down to being healthy. Hey, yeah. I want to give a shout out to my guy, Tony D. Savant. He's doing big things in the podcast world. I appreciate him taking some time out of his day to, to check out the OSP and my crew right here. Thanks, my brother. Up, Tony? Tony T. You know, here's the thing. Just, just give me 10 seconds. If we're going to talk, talk a true league MVP, every year it should be T.J. Watt that wins it. And I say that because even if he plays, the Steelers have lost games. But when he doesn't play, they're like one and nine, two and eight, or they're one they're, and they're eleven. One and eleven. So they're terrible. That is the true definition. the true definition of MVP, right? So having said that, take away TJ Water, he's there, he's good, whatever. You don't the no other nobody else has relied on. If Najee goes down, you have Warren. If the receivers aren't playing well, we got multiple receivers. We got tight ends. Tight ends aren't going well. We got receivers on the defense. Linebackers aren't playing well. You got a D line that can do your work. You got defensive backs that can help you out, fellas. This is going to be a complete team this year. I'm 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 geeked. And if you tell me Steelers are in the AFC Championship, I, I'm ready. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> I agree. That's a stat, real quick. That's a stat. Baseball used to like talk about a lot was war. Wins above replacement, and there yes. you have it. You put someone in replacing what one and eleven? How could he not bring That's Shane awesome. on to defend that? Oh, he only goes against the left side, but it doesn't matter. Left side, right side. He's the team's not winning without him. With them, they're they're doing a hell of a lot. Remember better. when Shane wanted to trade his ass last year? Dump his ass. He just don't get that piece of it. Uh, who's he going against? He's going against the right tackle. Last time I checked, the right tackle had to earn a earn a spot on the NFL team, right? Yeah. I mean that's and then they start putting a tight end over there. A tight end would chip him, then a tackle could take him. Well, he's beating that too. You know, next thing you know, you got a back coming out of the back though, taking a piece. Tight end running the seam route, getting a clip on him, then the tight end, then the tackle taking him. I mean, the guy is demanding attention. That means that somebody else. Is open. I mean, somebody yes. else has got a yes. free run. You can't yes. do that now with Patrick Queen in the middle. You can't. No, no. You absolutely cannot. And you we, know something? I keep hearing about this trade for IU. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm going to be straight up with you all. I don't know how I feel about that. But what I will tell you is if they move on from Highsmith, the Herbert kid, that they would plug in there, all hell's going to break loose with him. I think it will take a little maturation. He didn't play a full season, obviously. He was a rookie last year, right? Yeah. And but so it's going to take time. Whereas, as a rookie. Exactly. It's going to take time. Whereas Highsmith is right now in his prime, I think. or just he's, ri last year too. he's rising to it because he's a hell of a force on that opposite side of Watt. How many sacks did he had last year? How many sacks did he average in a year, Highsmith? I think he's averaging about eight or nine. I, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Remember, Watt was out a big chunk uh, a few years ago. Highsmith was uh, he was way up there. He blew it up on his side. You know, I, I personally like Highsmith. I'd like to keep him. They have him signed. He's under contract. In fact, they just reworked his deal to free up cash. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I get that. I get that piece of it, but I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure I'm moving on from from High Smith, although I like her big. I'm not sure I'm moving on from High Smith for IU. I really I, I'm very uncertain about what I want to do with that guy. I just I am. It doesn't sound it doesn't sound like he's compromising with San Francisco. I don't think he I think he wants it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, real quick. Here's the thing. I like his talent, but again. You're going to come to another system where it would be system, right? But, okay, you were number two in San Fran. Maybe. You're not coming. You're not. There you go. Because you got Kittle. Possibly. I forgot about. Well, Kittle. 
You're talking about option because you had you had MCMC, you had Kittle, you had Debo. But you come to Pittsburgh, you're still not number one receiver, and you're definitely not going to be, fellas. No. So, and I, what what type of mind frame are you bringing? Because now I'm I'm geeked. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers way is the Steelers way. You need to come in, know your role, and know where you're going to fit in. You're going to win thirty million a year. Thirty million a year is for a clear cut number one guy. You weren't even clear cut on your own team. So hey, I get. Lord bless you for asking for the money. Let's see if you get it. By the so way, High Smith, been, High Smith had fourteen and a half in twenty twenty two. Yeah, but only seven only last year. Seven last year. Yeah, I was looking at that. Yeah. Tiger missed the cut for six of the last seven majors he's been in. Is he done being competitive, fellas? Should, should he hang it up? This comes from Mike B. You know what The Rock would say? It doesn't matter. <laughs> he's, he's worth $1.3 billion. Who cares? You know what the PGA said? Hey, Tiger, anytime you want to come out, you got the lifetime exemption. Come out, swing the club. Why? It's good for fan base still. He's washed up. Signed a few autographs. Uh, you know. Who's the face of – let me ask you a question. Who's the face of golf? Oh, man. You got a lot of cats. Barbara, I couldn't well, – see, that to be there's no face. I thought McElroy was going to be for a while. I really did. And But I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And here's, here's why I say it's that. That's why Tiger is not washed up. No, 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 no. Well, hold on. He's washed up to me in the aspect of, do you ever see him on the leaderboard come Sunday? Do I think I will anymore? Nah. You never Maybe know, but I say, if, I say there's a less than a 20% chance. I'd say less than 15. We're ever going to see him in the thick of it come Sunday for ever again. However, what T. Sizzle said, he's, he's exempt. He's still going to bring eyes. He can still draw his just show up fee he can still you know what i mean so he's still a name in a draw what is it what do you have to be 50 to to senior tour which they get no love but i think he'd get there too but he's not old enough just yet but no he's no longer competitive and i do think he's washed up on that aspect but i if i'm him i'm still get out swing the clubs pay me my money i'll bring you ratings for thursday and friday then i'm going dipping back home saturday and sunday I, I don't think he's. I don't is he think, over his addiction? Have, have we heard he's over his addiction? I know he went to. I know he went to rehab on it. Here's the thing: I don't know, but after going to rehab and all this, you'd have to think he's better at hiding it if he's not. The, fellas, but a lot of people say once you have back surgery, you'll never be the same. Your back is a key, key, key component in golf. I just don't think he's straight from those surgeries. I just don't. And to be honest with you, his life went from sugar to shit when he got caught cheating. That's yep. a, I mean, who? Oh, yeah, there's been some Jordan rebounded. Kevin Coster had an ass. He rebounded. <laughs> Your boy Woods, he Tiger, he can't get his feet on the road call straight. He could not get back on the good foot after that. The other piece was, remember, he was uh he was uh, you know part of that discussion about using uh HGH. Mm -hmm. He was part of that discussion too. Fellas, if yeah. in case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm taking advantage of this time while we're in the midst of our podcast. To get my disc together for tomorrow's game, I went out. I'm addicted, fellas. I'm addicted to playing disc golf. I can't, I can't hit a golf ball. I, I cannot. I promise you I cannot. No matter how much I would play that game, I could not hit a golf ball. But I will tell you that I am down with playing this. Where, do you, where are you playing tomorrow? Uh, I might just play up the street here. We got a course right up the street. You and Vincent? Vince plays a lot now with me, too. It just depends. He's got football in the morning now, so I'll go out and I'll play 9, 12, maybe now, 18 if it's nice out. Do you When you walk onto the course, are you solo and get put with someone else, or do you already got a buddy you're meeting up there? No, I roll I roll single. Y'all play uh, – Sis played with me the other day. We played a hell of a game. Hold I'll on. let him hang with me for a little bit, then I pulled away at the end. So, you know, now – We, 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 we look like the freaking – we talk about bad backs. We look like those two old muppets up in the up in the shadow boxes. <laughs> what the hell is this hole about? Jesus, <laughs> how far is it? Oh I got shit! You. Like, who's this? Mazgay. I know that name. 
Oh, Leona Maskey. I wonder is, is Leona Maskey? Is she remar- is she to the cop the, the policeman? He was cool shit to me. Is she related to the to the old the cop back in the day? That was my man 50 grand. My hey. man 50 grizzle. <laughs> you remember Officer Masgay? Yeah. Yes, that was my guy. Listen, this is, who is this? Remember, this is his daughter when the, Huh? Is this his daughter? Who is this young lady? I don't know. But listen, do you remember when those cops would be riding around and they hand out Steeler cards? Yep. Yeah. They just pull over, hand out these Steeler cards. For, that was this that was the coolest thing back in the day, I thought. Hey, here's my guy right here, too. Tommy Palermo. He lives the life, this dude right here. I want his life. Retired cop. He owns a float joint over here in Frederick. He goes about, I don't know, probably about, what do you think, Tom? 20, 20 concerts a year. He sees them all. He doesn't care. Country. He, doesn't, he just. You, you know what? My dad once told me if you listen to rap, you don't like music, you like rap. So that's why I started listening to everything. So if you're telling me he goes all kind of, he's a, he's a, he's a music fan. He likes music, not just country, not music. just rock and roll. He, he loves, loves music. music. He's, yeah. he's a Scranton guy. He's from Scranton. Oh. Ain't no party like a Scranton party. You know, hey, what's a, he's what's got a nice little wrong? place on the, he got a nice little place on the lake up there. Yeah. He's from he's Scranton. Place, he's a Scranton guy. Yep. Dunder Great Mifflin. Dude. Oh. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, let's keep going here. This is a great question from Junior, our boy Junior from Indiana. Okay, here we go. Paul Skeens is dominating in his first year at the Pirates, and he dominated in the MLB one inning in the All-Star game. How long before he joins a contender like the Dodgers, Yankees, et cetera? What's his contract, four years? No, he can be here till 29. They can lock him in till 29. They got him a 29. His rookie contract six well, arbitration. Years? That's arbitration. That's the that's the contract. It was this way. Arbitration. It's when he happen. can jump, when he can jump ship, he's out. He's when out. he can jump ship, he's out. Unless, unless, unless like right? we talked about earlier, if they're legit and they start making moves and they start putting something together and they wake the owner's ass up and they start doing things, he 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 could potentially stick around. But then it gets to that second contract. Coming out of that, staying with Pittsburgh, and they're 500 around All Star break, a game over after two weeks after All Star break. He's going to be like, listen, I'm dominant. I don't want to be a big fish in a small pond anymore. I want the ring. The ring's the thing. Yeah. Uh, right now, he has 89 strikeouts and a 1.90 ERA. He, he Dodgers, Major League Baseball. Yeah. Dodgers and Yankees will be throwing the franchise to get a guy like that. They'd be like, yeah. here's here. They'd be giving him way more than Otani's contract is, you know, what do you want? We'll, we'll give your kids a contract is what they're. Well, and, he, and the thing is now, if you would, if this would have been 15, 20 years ago and he's still throwing this high heat, I'd have worried about his arm, but now they don't there. Everybody's on a pitch count. Nobody goes deep into the game anymore. So I think that's going to add years to his, to his baseball career. As soon as he gets a chance, he's dipping. The fellas also, when we were coming up, how do I say this? There was a pride toward a black gold. I don't care if you were a pen. I don't care if you were a stealer or if you were a pirate. You wanted to be in that uniform. We are family. You took pride in being there, and you wanted to wear those colors to win. It wasn't. They never had the highest payroll, but they were always competitive. The sports always, it was just you, the city locked down. Guys don't have that anymore, but also guys coming in or leaving the organization, especially the Pirates, aren't showing that love. They're not showing that we're more than just a sports team. We are a friggin' unit, for lack of a better term. They, guys just don't get that. They dip out on the Pirates fast. Like, Hell, remember your boy, Paul Amalo. He could have played elsewhere. He didn't. Uh Hines Ward, he, he cried. Hines Ward cried when he retired. He said he would rather play if he couldn't play in the black and gold. He wouldn't go anywhere else. You know what I mean? So there are some. There are a lot of guys like that, just not for the there's Pirates. A, there's a pride factor there, but, but that's also the culture of the sport in the sports world, though. Chops is okay. I can get more for less. Uh, I can go yeah. somewhere else, get more money. 
do less. You know what I mean? Like this guy's carrying the team. He's six and O oh. he's a rookie. He started the all-star game, which doesn't hold much stock anymore these days, but if all all-star games, the MLB all-star game is, I think legit. Those players are playing for something home field advantage in the playoffs, which the pirates will never get beside the fact he went lights out. Well, he went here, one, two, three. Real quick. T, why I, I, I'm feeling you on that, that it's the best of all the All-Star games, but why it matters in the baseball All-Star game, because we're one-on-one. -on -one. I may be on a team that, will, like Skeens, yeah. the Pirates aren't going to be worried about World, Home Field Advantage or World Series, no. but he's on that mound. If he gets up there and puts, and three guys put it in the bleachers on his first three batters, he's going to, hell no. But also in the same token, you're Aaron Judge. I don't care what happens. My team is going to be there, this, that, whatever. Even if they are, they aren't. I'm not letting this guy strike me out. It's one-on-one. -on -one. So there's a pride level that also comes in a Major League Baseball All-Star game that you're not getting in another oh, yeah. All-Star game. You know, football, where I don't want to tackle you. I don't want to get hurt. In basketball, I'll step aside so you can have a showcase dunk. Yeah. Ain't nobody doing that in MLB. No. I'm not throwing you a meatball so you can take me 420 yards or 420 feet. Not doing it. Yeah, there's a lot of stats you can throw out about him. The one I think is really impressive is his whip, walks and hits per inning pitch, 0.92, meaning only 0.92% are getting on base in an inning against him. That's gonna, not even one person. That's I'm going to go outside the box here, fellas, and I think this kid's going to be in Pittsburgh for 10 years. Huh? I, 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 yeah. You're nuts. Uh, you know what nobody okay. knows? Things still, don't change. Now listen, listen to me. He I'm still listening. will only be 32 years old because he's only 22. Okay. He will win a couple championships in Pittsburgh if they continue with the pitching staff they have. I just listened to guys talk about I, these are experts from Major League Baseball. Talk about if the Pirates get themselves in the playoffs and have any, any kind of consistency at all hitting. That they've got a rotation, and they've got they depth. do. That nobody wants. That I will that. mow down a five, a seven game series. I get that. They get themselves to play. Now, do they need to help themselves a little bit with a couple of spots? Yeah, but if they can do that, these are major league baseball experts that are saying. And, hey, and I did see that interview. I did see. The, I, I saw one. Well, I don't know what you're talking but I did see that too. Here's my only thing, Mark. And here's here'd be my only pushback to that. We've seen the Pirates have so so seasons, even when they were in a wild card or they were in a one season or one game playoff a few seasons back where they had momentum and the organization did nothing to expand on it. So I'm taking the same aspect now that I have for so many years with the Steelers. Pirates never do anything to improve themselves, Pirates never do anything to get the fan base hype. So until they do that, I think Skeens and as other pitchers and the bats are going to walk just like everybody else, and the Pirates are going to let them. I, Skeens I, got I, a taste of Ske, Skeens didn't pitch this weekend, uh, but he got a taste of what it's like to be in Pittsburgh when uh, the fans come out in droves and you're playing competitive baseball because Saturday, that thing was pretty near close to sellout on Saturday in Pittsburgh against the Philly, and that joint was rocking. That joint was rocking. They, they Barbara, I, I want to be positive like you are. I do. I want to be positive, but I I, they, I, they've Charlie Brown me so many times, pulled the football that's away. That's why I said if, you, if I, nothing changes, hey, he's going to change teams. I, I sent you this uh, this little graphic the other day. University of Maryland football can't seem to beat the big dogs in the Big Ten. What do they need to do to turn the tables at the University of Maryland? Because they want to bark with them. They start the season out. You know they they've done a great job starting the season out. They'll go six and zero, oh, seven and zero, oh, six and one, and then they got to get into the meat grinder portion where they're either playing Ohio State, Michigan State, a uh, uh, Penn State. Uh, you know they can't beat those teams. They don't just lose to those teams, fellas. They get the snot beat out of them by those. They got to pay more NIL money. Just being honest with you, that's where all the top players are going. Who's paying me? That's where the top players are going. So, so don't, I mean, you, don't you think Kevin Plank should pony up? Now, don't 
don't get me wrong, their facilities, Mike, are state of the art facilities. I mean, their facilities are top shelf. But who who else is putting money on the table for that? That's what I want to know. Why can't I, know. I, why I can't equate I Maryland, these guys? I equate Maryland football to like pit basketball. Like you said, they're right there, and then they just can't get over that uh, hurdle. They can't get over that edge of playing with the top competitors like Ohio State or um, Penn State. We talk about recruiting in the backyard. You know, Stefan Diggs. Okay, he whatever. They got went Chop, to Maryland. Chop Robinson, but then he he left and went to Penn State. They got Caleb some guys. Williams. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, he he was he took a tour of the college football scene. He played in like three or four places, but, uh, Oklahoma and USC. So three. But, Just getting those guys from the backyard is one thing, but you also get some of these top recruits also to to help that they're not getting because they're going to schools that are reputable and have a track record of winning, and the coaching is consistency. Saban was at Alabama for how long? Um, what's his name's at Clemson for how long? These guys are, are sitting there and building that culture in a winning tradition, re- recruiting from the backyard, and getting people to come in and buy into the system. But, fellas, here's the thing I, I don't have the numbers, but I know on recruiting, Georgia, University of Georgia has been tops for the last few years. Yeah. yeah. That is, but they're putting money into it. You know they're paying NIL dollars, right? So having said that, Georgia, they weren't 10, 12 years ago what they are now. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying, but they're starting to spend money. You have to spend money. Look at LSU, or excuse me, LSU put in money when they had your uh a few years ago. Everybody jokes about Ohio State. They're trying to buy the buy the national championship. I'm flat out, fellas. You can have the nicest facilities, but if guys are saying, okay, University of Maryland, whoo. Facilities are top notch. They're beautiful. But this spot over here, I still get to play on TV. Everybody's got a nice facility, but they're putting a little bit of money in mom's pocket. They're putting a little bit of money in my pocket. They just gave me a G Wagon. What are you doing? But I think I think NIO was one of the worst things that ever happened to college football, college sports, only because you have guys coming out of high school that haven't proven anything yet, and they're getting top dollar. That to me is if you want to pay a guy once he's in college, just proved he can play, proved he can put asses in seats, proved he can give you a chip. I'm cool with it. But these young rookies and freshmen coming in that haven't proven anything that, well, you did great in college or high school, so we're going to give you this big time. I'm not that. That to me is I had a problem with they that even, even before, like a rookie contract in the in the leagues yeah. that they were getting these buku buck contracts like. You just said they haven't proved anything yet. Yeah. They, yeah. they didn't think about putting some stipulations in on NIL, nor did they with the portal. And that's why college athletics is on its ear right now. We're moving on, yeah. fellas. Uh, just a couple more here to go. And we're going to be quicker so we can get done. If you were going to start a franchise in football, what quarterback off a current roster would you select first? This is called Nikki from the Hill. Nikki from the oh. I think, I mean, to me, I, I shouldn't say it's a no-brainer. I guess it's an open-ended personal question. I'm going with Patrick Mahomes plus minus 30 pounds. After that play, I saw him pass. I don't even, don't even it don't even matter. <laughs> Honestly, fellas, I might go with Lamar Jackson, and here's why. Here's why. In that Super Bowl against Tampa Bay. He looked – he looked – he wasn't even average, your boy Mahomes. So he truly showed you because he had no speed to outrun anybody. He showed you what he would look like with no offensive line. He couldn't outrun anyone. He couldn't get to the outside. And depending on how my line is, I would go with the quarterback that can run. I would go with Patrick – I would or Patrick. I would go with Lamar Jackson. I would – fellas, he had a hunt of well over 100 yards rushing – Behind the line of scrimmage in that Super Bowl with no offensive line, I would go Pat. I would go Lamar Jackson because he gives me that ability to be able to move and create when nothing is there. Good point. 
I'm going with Josh Allen. Okay. He's a turnover machine, but he also has never had a foundation in front of him, like like two or three good receivers. You know, now they traded away. They lost Gabe. They lost Gabe Davis. They traded away Diggs. Who's going to be on either side of him now? You got to think about <laughs> that. And he's got tight ends. He's got two top shelf, you know, tight ends. Yep. Barbara, but that, that's, that's my point. That's why, is we know Lamar Jackson has never had truly a great receiving core. Yet he's got two league MVPs. Mahomes receivers led the league in drops. Yet he still got them to the to, to the Super Bowl and won it. Allen, just like Wentz, guys are making, I hate to say making excuses, but it's always like, well, they need help. They need help. When you're going over to all number one or the first round draft pick of your team, you were supposed to make them better. That's why we took you first overall. That's my only – and I look at Allen on the same way I do Rodgers, where they're getting all these accolades. And when I say accolades, people are talking about highly how they start a team with them. He can run, he can run just like Lamar. He can run Ooh. just like Lamar. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Ooh. I think only you and Allen's mama shifty. think that. I, he's not – He's I, not shifty and – Lamar's got another gear. True. He got maybe two or three other gears. Josh Allen don't. Two or three. Two or three. three. That's a good question. Good debate. It was hey, real good. Cup, cup, three more, and I think we can bang these out quick. Who do you think has the best entrance song into the stadium in college football? That comes from somebody who named himself Bear Bryant. Song, uh, yeah, they come out I, to. I'll start with mine, Virginia Tech. I was gonna say Virginia Tech, Sam, man. Sam, man. We saw that kid reminded me of it, uh, at the concert the other day, and I just think that's just, I don't know, that gets you in the mindset, lights out. I'm gonna take care of business, like Mariano Rivera used to when he came in for the Yankees, and that that song just it, it fires me up just listening to it. I, the song, we're all in agreement on that. However, I do like for night games the way the University of Clemson enters the stadium. Yeah. That's impressive, fellas, coming down the hill. Yeah, I was going to say overall, that too, Chops. But night games at LSU, that to me, I love that too. And it's just the entire atmosphere. So, so if we're going strictly song, got to go Virginia Tech. But yeah. the way they enter the stadium, the Clemson Tigers coming down that hill, Fellas, that, I mean, whew, that's yeah. intimidating too, man. That is. That, that's you mean touching a turtle, touching a turtle shell doesn't hype you up, man? It, <laughs> maybe it, it, oh, it's about, the same as Dead Valley. How about Country Roads? That, does that do it for you? <laughs> Country Roads, or when they say eat shit pit. <laughs> oh yeah, that that really gets me going. Hey, real quick, uh, last two questions. Uh, Bronny James, will he make it in the NBA? Because I think he's had a so-so summer league run. Or is this just about appeasing dad? Okay. It, it, it's a couple, there's two questions in there. Um, like, will he, what's your take on him? You know, will he make LeBron happy or can he develop into a solid player? He'll His dad will be happy just when they start the season, they can be on the floor together, whatever have you. I don't know what your definition of solid player is because here's the thing. He can't score. I, I I had to compartmentalize this because I didn't like the pick because I'm not a LeBron fan. I'm really not. And I admit LeBron has done everything positive. You can't say anything negative about the guy. So he's a positive as in that aspect. But is Bronny, one of his teammates' moms? No. Oh, boy, was banging his mom when he was at Cleveland. They oh, were banging okay. LeBron's mom. Yeah, when he was at Cleveland. But here's the thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. They, they were digging out moms when he was at Cleveland. But oh. here's the thing. Brawny, if you ever listen to him talk, and I say because he's been around media his entire life here and his father, he is a good kid, and he's, he's he respectful. So I think he'll put the time in, but he's not ready. Jalen Brown said it. Now he had to walk it back yeah, because somebody put it out there. But you said it and you meant it and you were right. You weren't ignorant. You you should have stood on you, he should have stood on business when he said it. 
Brawny's not ready for the NBA, but because of his name, he'll be on a roster. I think Braun will work, but sports is the one thing. See, I'm a firm believer anybody can be a doctor. And I say that because if you study enough, the information is there. You can attain it just if you put the time into study. Not everybody can be a Hall of Famer. Not everybody can be an all-star because that's physical talent. You can work hard enough to make the team, but not everybody can be an all-star. So I think he can be solid because he'll get better, but I don't think he'll ever – I don't think he'll be a – I don't say he'll be a multiple all-star because I don't think he'll have that talent. But I think Bronny will be solid. He may be a journeyman because I think once his father retires, if we don't see a great improvement, he's gone. He he will be cut to me. So will he be solid? What's your definition of it? I think he'll be a journeyman. I think he'll be on multiple teams, not like Shaq, who chose to go to multiple teams. I think he'll be on multiple teams – because he's just going to keep getting cut. So are you saying Bronny did not say, I come to L.A. to get a ring for the king, like Shaq did when he went to Cleveland? Yeah. No. Bronny's not it. Uh, he's averaging eight, eight, nine points a game in the, in the summer league, which is which is what, you know? Uh, the top caliber guys pick aren't up, even pick up in games. there. We yet. saw better. We saw better games at the uh, crossing tournament in Banner, probably. Oh man, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, um, so I, I don't see him hanging around more than five years. That's, oh, a, uh, that's an over. Love kid though. He's, he's he seems like a pretty nice kid. He yes, really he does. does. I mean, he I really think because we've seen because we've seen man, your boy Wilson from the Jets. He came in, seemed arrogant to me. Even when he talked to the talked to the media, he Jess Corbett Bryce, he seemed arrogant. Bronny doesn't seem that, even though he's had wow. everything handed to him since he was a kid. I think he, but I also think he was humble with that heart issue. You know, and part of me is, does he want to play? Or like I said, is he playing for dad because dad wants to? I don't know. I, I don't know. But I do see the kid has a work ethic, and I think he'll keep grinding. I think he'll get better. Don't think he's gonna be uh Eight ten time all star. He's no but crime. Yeah, I think he'll get better. Hey, last one, and I don't want to. I don't want a lot of dialogue on this one. Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese? It's the WNBA version of Magic and in. Ah, uh, uh, no, because here's the thing: they want to make it that these are two different positions. Here's the thing, which I don't understand. Caitlin Clark, now they're the best of the best. They shut her down in the All-Star game, but they deed her up tight. Old girl from you, uh, South Carolina deed her up the second half and played her tight, and she was shut down. I don't understand why more teams aren't playing Caitlin Clark that way. But to me, I see your girl Angel Reese getting better only because as a rookie, she's getting rebounds and she's scoring her points, which to me, that's work ethic. So she should get better on the work ethic. To me, is Caitlin Clark, if they started d her up, I don't know what her numbers would look like. You know what I'm saying? So I don't say who I like better because they're two different positions. They I like the way – her up in the WNBA All-Star game. I think – What's that mean? I don't think you I, – I said they deed her up in the NBA All-Star – or in the WNBA All-Star game. But what I would say about that is I can't compare the two. They play two totally different No, two positions. different positions. They do two, to, two totally different things. And, and, and I – I'll stand by what I say right here. I think they should be co-rookies of the year if there is such a thing to do there. I think it's just way too close in what they brought to the game at, for the ladies that you can actually diversify away from it. I know what you're saying about the double-double. I get it. She gets a lot of her own rebounds, too. She's not a very good shooter. But, but see, that's – yeah, well, hold on, though. But also, though, if you see some of these rebounds Caitlin Clark's getting – because to me – However you want to look at it, they don't take rebounding as serious in the WNBA as the NBA. Like a lot of girls, once the ball shot, they're just clearing out of the paint. They really are. However, my thing is, yes, Caitlin Clark is bringing the eyes, but then, but when it is you need the defense, you're taking her out. That to me is that you, you, you'd have to weigh that also. Now, I'll be honest with you. I, because I don't follow much basketball, men's or women's, can't really go on me who would I give rookie of the year to. You, you can't really do I can, I'm, I don't have a good vote. But right. there are two different positions, and I'm always going to be Angel Reese because of right now she's doing things in the paint. You know me. I like defense. 
nobody yeah. plays it. And you know what I'm saying? So and, and, I understand, I and I understand there are two different positions, whereas Magic and Bird played guard, but played in college together. They built that rivalry. Coming to the NBA together, that rivalry continued. It was back and forth with championships. And I think these two got it going on. The, the bad thing about this story is that the social media and the media is hyping it up to be something that it isn't instead of the competitiveness of it. Well, and I think the stats are good for both of them. Double-double for Reese uh, Clark averaging almost 18 points a game. Her turnovers, though, she shrunk them a little bit, but that's what was hurting her yeah. early on. You know, so, yeah. maybe she can borrow some of those pounds from Mahomes. She needs to bulk up a little. She's getting thrown around like a little. She will. She will. You know, you know yeah. what, though, Mark? Real talk. We've seen players that have even looked different from from their freshman year to their senior year in college. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of difference in her size from even then. You know, guys will get to high school or, excuse me, college and put on the college pounds. She hasn't put on many college pounds. Maybe she's just small framed. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that, you know what I mean. You know, so we'll you see. Take this is where this is where I might piss a few people off, and I don't really care about it. They can be pissed off, but female anatomy, their bodies. It's different. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Without question. Without and, and, question. And she might she might be strong as a, a fucking horse. We don't know that. But I will say that female anatomy is different. She could yeah. hit the weight room all she wants. She could eat like a dog. But she might never gain weight. But you have to believe, Mark. you got to believe the fever. Even if it's not on their payroll, they should have access to a, a nutritionist, somebody that they would got, be able to yeah, help her. I'm sure they got one Look on their payroll. Yeah. You know, only problem why I don't see them as magic and bird only because those guys were both scorers and could help dictate the flow of the game. You never really saw – you would like to have seen Shaq play against Shaq and Elijah one or Shaq, but you never had those centers, oh, how they – you know, where you had two big centers that were followed like that, only because they don't control the game. It's the last thing here, Mikey. Throw that out the window. What they're saying about Reese – and Clark is the fact that they brought a dynamic to the league that started in college. It's not about them playing the same position or even their game per se. They're both somewhat superstars, even at this early stage of their career. It's not about that. It's not about their basketball game. It's about the charisma and the attention that they brought to the game. It has nothing to do with their game. And, uh, and you know, and, that, and why that, I guess it bothers me because I understand if you want to look at certain court. I still hate when they say Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson. Yeah. They don't play defense, so it's not it's not it's not them. And it bothers me when they're tying these two together because there have been other drafts where a great quarterback. It, hell, you look at when it was never Peyton Manning versus Woodson. They came out in the same draft. They were both repeat, but they're different positions. That's the only thing that bothers me, and they're asked to do different things. You know what I mean? Now, it we'll see, we'll see how it goes, and but that is where, in a lot of cases, these new people, and I say new people, the new generation of the way sports are covered, they're just we're caught in the moment type people. People say things, and they don't really oh, yeah. think about it. You know, I I don't know, man. They're going to be tied together. They came out in the same draft, but we've seen other players come out together in the same draft, and it I don't know, man. It just I don't hey, know. Fellas, great mailbag. Uh, thanks to everybody who, oh, I love who it. actually love submitted, submitted questions. Uh, don't forget to check out Dubby. It's a pretty good energy drink. There's no crash out of it. Um, you can find all the information you need on our Facebook page, our group. Join our group if you're not in our group. And uh, get yourself some Dubby today. Um, you can use OSP with MM and get 10% off of your purchase choppers tell them how they can keep up with you on social media well you know what it is on the twitter the real big chops or x as they call it now the real big chops on instagram on the gram it's your boy big chop 79 on where else my pa on facebook it's my government name michael gregory mills and on the tiktok it's big chops 824 going back don't throw back to the 
address where I was born and raised in Griff City, 1824. Sis, wow. hey, well, you can catch me on the gram and Twitter and Facebook on, at one T Youngie. Nice. Hey, connect with us here on the Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday and the Barbershop Crew. Our website is podpage.com, Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. All those are OSP with MM. You can find us on the Graham. You can find us on TikTok and YouTube. All those are original sports podcasts. A shout out to all our networks we're on Peak One Sports, Let's Talk Sports Network, uh, Sideline Sports Net, uh, Elite Sports and Entertainment Network, and Manning Media. Uh, you can catch our shows if you miss any of them on Tuesday nights from 9 to 10 on Roku. Uh, feel free to let us know if you have any comments, questions, suggestions for guests by emailing us at original sports podcast at gmail.com. Shout out to Steve Medley for doing our voice intro, Charlie Hodgson for all our music. Join us next week where we hope to have the dream back with us again <laughs> after his summer tour uh, and experience CEO on the original sports podcast. You know, Lajuan's coming on the dream. Yeah. <laughs>